Hey guys, it's me, EOD Gaming here, and today we're back with another build guide video for version 1.3. You can see links in the background. Let's start off first with a very important question I think a lot of you might be asking. Do you want to run HP percentage or outgoing healing bonus on links? I think the question, uh, the most important thing if you're asking this question is you need to understand what does HP percentage do that outgoing healing bonus doesn't do. Of course, if you're talking about pure healing, outgoing healing boost would likely uh, be much better, especially since you can't find this in substats. But for those of you who don't exactly know her kit very well, I'll tell you why HP percentage is actually a very strong contender, especially if you're running a team, for example, like Blade, a HP hyper carry kind of role. Um, it becomes even more so the case. And really, it's because of her skill ability here. This survival response that she that puts on a particular target to not only draw aggro, but it increases the amount of max HP that character has. For example, like Blade, you have here max increase by a percentage of her max HP plus a flat amount. And this increases even more if you were lucky and got more Eidolons for links. Especially here, you see E6 increases it by an additional 6% of max HP and also increasing attack of the character that you cast the survival response to by, for example, a percentage of her max HP as well. So she does get quite a bit of additional benefits. Of course, her basic attack here also scales off with a HP percentage, but that's a side note. Outgoing healing bonus is centered mainly around purely healing, but if you are running maybe HP hyper carries or HP scaling hyper carries, that is when I will actually highly recommend you uh, deviate away from outgoing healing bonus into HP's percentage. Now, I've split this section. Now that we've talked about the probably the most confusing part of the start, and a lot of you might be wondering why are some people running HP percentage instead of outgoing healing bonus? That is the main reason. Now, I'm going to just jump in really with a very simple build that everyone can start off with, and then I will tell you why this build, which I'm going to recommend like a pure HP tank links, is not going to be super efficient. You might want to go into a more hybrid build. I'll give you reasons for that as well. But some of us just like a very simple start. Uh, build so that we can just get her started and start playing immediately and let's uh, first jump into the first section which is really HP tank links. Fleet of Ageless probably will be my best pick for a uh, HP scaling tank. The objective here in this section is really to get her HP as high as you can to of course get the benefits of healing, to get the benefits of auto attacking with a little bit more damage and also the HP buffing of uh, HP scaling characters. Increased Barrier's Max HP 12%, very very strong. If you are lucky to get some substats of speed, you might get an additional attack percentage of 8%, but um, if you are playing with HP scaling DPSs, this one is not super critical. I think the HP element is just, just more attractive, so you don't feel stressed if you can't get like a, a very nice speed substat to hit this amount as well. Um, that is definitely probably my top pick. We'll talk about like other um, options in the hybrid build, which is where it's going to be more appropriate as well. Here, we're just trying to top up a very simple build to get as much HP as we can. For the four piece, Longevous Disciple definitely will be my pick. Uh, max HP percentage here. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm just jumping back here. The, the main stat that you want, of course, is HP percentage for both the Planar Sphere and Link Road for this section. We'll talk about how it deviates in a little bit. Uh, Longevous Disciple, 4-piece, you want this 2%. Uh, the 2-piece, max HP 12%. And of course, I think that Passify of Wondrous Cloud increases outgoing healing by 10% is also going to be quite attractive. If you feel that with this full HP build, um, she's already healing a lot, you can of course switch this over to my third pick, which is Messenger Traversing Hackerspace. More speed means more energy restoration, which means more uh, sustain for the rest of the team as well. And in terms of the feed, I will go with HP percentage uh, here for just for HP tank build. And in the body here, I will go for HP percentage to cap her out as much as you can. Uh, of course, we talked about the benefits of outgoing healing bonus and HP at the start of the video. Um, and for those of you who want to deviate to outgoing healing bonus, I think it's fine as well. But if you are trying to get the number of her HP as high as you can, HP percentage is of course what we aim for. Now, the at this point, I think it's really useful to understand the limitations of max HP. If you just stack max HP on everything, you're going to hit a point where you have diminishing return. And what really the diminishing returns means is that when you stack too much max HP of a character, note that this max HP is off of her base amount. So it's not this, let me just go into this more stats here. It's based on this base amount and not the other uh, HP percentage that you have stacked already. So if adding more HP percentage means every subsequent blue number that you're adding is going to be less of a proportion of the entire thing. That is why this diminishing return word comes about, which means too much of a good thing is never good, a good thing in a sense. Uh, that's really how uh, it came about. So then the question is, once it diminishes, what else do you want to go into? Because yes, it might be diminishing, but she doesn't really benefit from crit rate, crit damage, and a lot of the other things. 
And I think the main thing that I'll actually consider as a hybrid build, which is what this section is meant for, is supporting the rest of the team even better instead of just scaling off as a pure HP tank. So this is actually my preferred section, a little bit more complicated because we are going to talk about a lot more, more things and focus on team dynamics. But if any of you are interested in playing Lynx for the long term, I think this section will be very interesting for you to build her in many different teams too. Broken Kill will be my preferred choice over Fleet of Ageless, mainly because uh, crit damage here scales off with HP scaling tanks. Uh, attack percentage might not scale with all characters, especially maybe some are uh, scaling with defense. Uh, here, crit damage is universal. She benefits a lot from effect rest, 10% here, and also um, when her effect rest is 30% or higher, which most abundance characters do tend to have a bit higher effect rest from either light cones, tracers, and stuff like that. She will get this effect quite well, 10% increased allies damage. Some of you are asking, does this stack? And yes, it does. All four characters can use this. So you basically give your whole team a crit damage increase of 40% across the board. Of course, at a caveat of all of them have to have 30% uh, percent effect rest individually too. I like this a lot. Um, I will probably deviate from Fleet of Ageless to this. And of course, Sprightly Von Weck is another possible option, but 5% uh, energy restoration rate, the second effect here is not very, very useful for Lynx either. So you're really fighting 5% energy restoration with, with like 10% effect rest and 10% crit damage. In my opinion, I think Broken Kill outperforms significantly, but if you have a very good one, no one to put it on, I think it's fine too. Um, for Link Rope, I will actually deviate away from HP percentage into energy restoration rate. She gets more uptime here. You can't find this stat very easily in substats as well. HP percentage has diminishing returns. I would likely uh, want to switch more to energy restoration rate. Of course, this is an ideal world. In reality and even my account, I don't have too many link ropes that are energy restoration rate. Um, and I know that some other characters like maybe Bronya, Tingyun might use this a lot better for energy restoration and you don't want to put it on your healer. If that's the case, I think HP percentage is still fine, which is what I'm running on her because of lack of resources limitation. But um, that's like a non-ideal world perspective. For the four piece, I'm going to be sticking to the main two piece, two piece sets, which is Longevous Disciple, Passerby of Wanderer's Cloud. If you don't want to run Passerby of Wanderer's Cloud and you are not running Energy Restoration uh, Rope, I highly recommend you run Messenger of Traversing Hackerspace instead. Speed is a substitute, a good substitute for Energy Restoration because the more you act means the more actions that you take and the more skill points that you can generate for your team. Plus also you get more energy restoration for character. So it's like a pseudo energy restoration rate. Uh, that's how I see speed as. Uh, in that case, what's worth considering is you can switch away from HP to speed, especially if you want to have more uptime on her, uh, ultimate ability for a team wide cleanse, team wide healing. And at the same time, you also can attack more often to get more skill points. Her skill, the survival response is based on her turns, not the uh, teammates turns so her moving faster isn't detrimental to forcing her to use more of her skill points too that is uh, something useful to note and uh, for body here i think at this point i will be most likely going with outgoing healing bonus will probably be quite solid of course if you are running with a hp scaling tank uh, that you want more hp as you can see if we swap out to like energy restoration rate you swap out to for example uh, speed boots already and you don't have very good substats with hp percentage in that case you might want to still get a little bit here for HP percentage and forego a bit of healing. But uh, optimally, I will go for outgoing healing bonus because HP percentage can be found in substats, but the other way around doesn't work. So that is for my build for Lynx, uh, how I'll recommend most people start two different ways. Um, really, you can't really go wrong with this character as long as you follow either one of these builds. You can tweak here and there based on your needs. Now, I think what's more interesting is going into the light cones and talking about some uh, light cones that we can consider for her as well. Light cones. So the rule of thumb, like for any of you who want a TLDR, I think any of the four stars are going to be more or less the same in terms of uh, performance. Some might be slightly better or not, but not to stress you out or anything. All of them works pretty well as well. The real question is, you're going to have two healers, Natasha on one half, maybe Lynx on the other half. Make sure you have a good distribution. Each one gets probably a evenly distributed uh, resource. And of course, five star light cones are definitely superior for max HP scaling character. If you were to have, for example, this as max, this at like max level, time waits for no one, 1270 max HP, whereas for example, a four star like post op you can see here is 20% less. Um, Link skills a lot better with max HP compared to Natasha. So if you were to have a five star one, you want to put um, the, the better base stats on Link's compared to Natasha, since that uh, Link's also buffs at E4 attack percentage for your characters based on max HP, at E6 even more max HP bonuses with her max HP scaling. That is why I'll actually put like the the, ra the rarer gear on Lynx rather than Natasha. This of course is also very strong. You have 18%, uh, 12% here, 
for max HP outgoing healing bonus, both of which you can use. Additional damage is a nice thing to have. Other than that, most 4 stars I would say is very usable by her. She, ha she can use the energy restoration, uh, increase outgoing healing for this one. You have shared feeling which increases outgoing healing and at the same time also regenerates uh, energy for the rest of the team. She likely will be using her skill more than Natasha. Um, Natasha usually only uses her skill either to cleanse or to heal. But uh, for example, for Lynx, you could use that re the survival response on other characters because it does like buff HP percentage, draw aggro and stuff like that. So I do see Lynx as using her skill more than Natasha and that's why Shed Feeling also becomes more relevant uh, in my opinion at least. Uh, perfect timing is also very very usable. Even at super imposition level uh, 1, you already have 16% effect rest. With 10% from broken kill, you have 26% just straight up from the substats. Very very strong and you get an outgoing healing bonus that scales off of this as well. If you see like maybe tougher content where enemy has a lot of crowd control, this of course can be really good because you have double scaling. Not only you get effect rest, buff crit damage to your whole team, you also get outgoing healing bonus that scales off with the effect rest that you get and also crowd control resistance. Uh, pretty nice in my opinion. Quid pro quo, uh, at the start of the, the wearer's turn, you re regenerate like 8 energy for a randomly chosen ally whose current HP is lower than 50%. Is this is also pretty decent. It doesn't give you a lot of healing stats and of course the HP is a lot less, but still energy is pretty good. Unfortunately, it's random um, and up to 50% also. Um, some Just something to note about, um, but still useful. And Warm Shorten the Cold Knights, this is the Battle Pass one. This increases wax max HP by 12%, up 16%. And when you use basic attack or skill, which she does want to use quite often, you restore all allies HP by 2% of their max, uh, respective max HP. This allows you to, of course, like, hold on to your ultimate a bit longer, just giving a little bit of sustain to the whole team. Um, I think it's pretty useful as well, um, but and but really, as you can see, all four of the four stars are pretty good. And for any of you who have any other five star abundance ones, of course, you they are likely going to be good for the main stat here, as you can see, very high scaling, but I don't really like lower task one because it gives attack, which she doesn't really care too much about. But probably if you have this, you likely won't be slapping it on her. Uh, anyway, but I do think that 5 star stats still make a pretty big difference. And yeah, that's for light cones. Let's talk real quick about teams. So for Lynx, I think um, the most important thing is a HP hyper carry build that you can go for. She uh, buffs the max HP of characters, which means characters like Blade love it a lot. And other than HP hyper carries that you want to buff like HP percentage, you can of course um, use her for characters that want to have increased aggro, like maybe uh, Imbibator Lune. You draw more aggro to him, he gets more energy because when he gets hit, he recharges as well. You protect him by healing him up a little bit as well. Or you can of course play her with other characters like uh, preservation characters to draw aggro to them uh, to or increase the chance of aggro draw. Very, very versatile character and a very, very strong cleanser as well. Um, pretty much whatever team that you're going to run Natasha, you probably can run Lynx. I'll talk about when one outperforms the other in a little bit, but most of the time we are going to be playing both, especially if you're a free-to-play player with not so many like preservation or five-star um, limited characters that can sustain. Uh, I do think that she likely will fill a role in one team over the other. The question is which team to put which one. Check out this other video right here, which we go into many, many more team compositions for links, including a free-to-play one where I recommend you uh, if you just had your second healer in the game, no other five-star healers too. And of course, uh, if you are interested in the other character on the banner right now, Fushen, I have another video talking about the build guide as well. Do check that out if you're interested. And thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.